So about one year ago, there was a tag floating around on YouTube, and that was the top 50 comics in your collection tag. And I believe it was actually part of a contest that the Doom 143 was running. He wanted to see everybody's top 50 comic books in their collection. So I actually got in on it and had a lot of fun doing it. And uh, it was it, it was just, it actually made me rethink the way I collected books and the books that actually you know meant the most to me at the time. So, like I said, a full year has passed, and now, you know, my collecting tastes have changed again, and uh, some books have come, some books have gone, and I've gotten a whole bunch of new ones. So I figured I would revisit this top 50 and just kind of, you know, do a recap and show you all the books that I've now selected for a top 50 in my collection. You know, we'll see what's still here, what's not, what's new. So I figured this would be kind of fun. So anyway, guys, this is Comic Vantage, and here is my top 50 comic books in my collection now you may see some keys in here but a lot of times you're gonna see a lot of off the wall stuff now a lot of books that mean the most to me come out of the 90s so and at the 90s i was doing a lot of indie and i was doing a lot of marvel so you're gonna see a ton of that um so anyway let's get started so first up in my top 50 and these are in no particular order and i'm actually not going to count them down because i'm just going to lose track and you know make a fool out of myself anyway anyway first up we have Lady Death, The Odyssey, and this is the premium edition. Oh, look at that chromium goodness. Man, the 90s had beautiful, beautiful books. I love the chromium covers. Now, anyway, uh, I the reason this actually stands out to me the most is because I had got a chance to meet Brian Polito for the umpteenth time, like three or four years ago, at uh, the Comic-Con here in Vegas, the amazing Las Vegas Comic-Con. He had a booth there, it was really dead, so him and I had a chance to you know chat and we kind of bonded. I showed him my Chaos Comics tattoo. He showed me his. And he's like, hey, do you want something really cool? And he reaches under the table and he pulls out an entire case full. He goes, yeah, we just found these in a warehouse. He goes, are you interested? I'm like, oh, hell yeah. So here it is. And then he signed it for me. He gave me a COA. Oh, look at that. Ah, see, you can see both sides. Beautiful. You see that? Clear backboards. Love that. You'll see a couple of those pop up in this because I have comic books that are front and back and wrap around that I really want to see both sides. Anyway. There's the first book. Next up, G.I. Joe, issue number 21. This is a new addition to the list. I've been wanting this book for a few years now. Now, whenever I buy books for myself, I always buy the roughest copies possible because I have a problem holding on to books. If they're in too good of a shape, I don't keep them. I end up selling them. So I found this one. As you can see, it's rough. I'm going to throw it to the press and see what I can find. It's got a date stamp on it, but it is, you know, a newsstand version. And this is that wonderful silent issue where there's no words. It's also the uh, first appearance of Storm Shadow. I love Snake Eyes. I love Storm Shadow. And I love silent issues. Um, I'm actually, you'll probably see a couple of those pop up on the list. I love a story that's told with no words. So, all right. And next, Pachow. Venomverse number one. And this is the variant cover. I believe this might be comic exposure or something. Uh, now, the reason this is on my list, because my kid bought this for me. It was a gift, and I absolutely adore it. And it's a beautiful cover, too. Man, you gotta love that. Oh, put you out. Next up, Gen X number one. Again, beautiful chromium 90s luscious goodness. And signed by Scott Lobdell and Chris Bacalo. And look, he drew little X's all over the book. <laughs> Beautiful cover. And this, you know, again, this is 90s to me right here. I was huge into Chris Boccolo artwork, and I still am. I love his artwork. And Generation X was an amazing story. It was so much fun to read. What else do we got? Next up, Creed number one. Again, this comes out of the 90s. You know, in the 90s, we had a lot of, the 80s and 90s, we had a lot of these big superstar artists that were on the rise. And the gentleman that wrote this and drew it, his name was Trent Kanuga. Man, look at that. Now, the reason this is on my list, not only for the beautiful artwork, but man, when this kid was putting this book out, I mean, he's not a kid anymore. I believe he was 16 or 17 when he was doing this. I mean, he was living the dream that we all wanted to back then. So, you know, you got to respect that. Boom. Next on my list, Marvel Comics presents Weapon X number one. And again, 
Uh, one of the first Marvel series I read was the Weapon X story in Marvel Comics Presents. I remember going to the flea market with my dad and going to the comic book booth they had there and just buying up all these issues. Oh, and this gave me my introduction to Barry Windsor Smith artwork. And again, beautiful. There's the other side. And this is one of those clear backboards again. Man, absolutely amazing. I love this man's artwork. Hey, this guy draws the quintessential Wolverine to me. So, and what do we have next on the list? Woohoo! Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, issue number 54, the RE cover. Now, this was a Team Eastman exclusive. Originally, it was a con edition, and then the rest were sold through the, or the first, it was an Eastman Fun Club book. But either way, super, super, super hard to get. Signed and remarked by Kevin Eastman. Now, you know, the reason this book is on my list is because it really is a grail book to me. I've been wanting this book for a long time. And whenever I told somebody I wanted this book, everybody said the exact same thing, good luck. <laughs> because nobody wants to part with this book. I think I've seen it pop up once on eBay in the last two years. And you know, everybody knows eBay gets everything all the time, but not this book. Next on my list, Marvel's number two. Uh, this series, monstrous back in the 90s. Everybody loved it. This is what really put Alex Ross on the map for his artwork. It's absolutely beautiful. The entire thing is painted by Alex Ross. And uh, issue two in particular was the really standout takeoff issue. Issue one came out, sold out. But by a rule, when you order comics, you always order less of the second issue because it's not going to sell as well, which made this the hot book in the series. And it just follows the story of a photographer who's just going through and, you know, photographing life in the Marvel Universe. And this one dealt with mutants. So, beautiful. Uh, next book on my list, Zinnober number one. Now, this book is on my list because it's just stunningly beautiful to start with. I mean, God, that's a gorgeous cover. But the real reason why it's on my list is because this was a gift from my buddy Daz the Key Chaser. He's a really great guy, and I actually treasure all the books he, he sent to me. This one in particular, though, I absolutely love it. Oh, bum, bum, bum. Next on my list. I just need to stop saying that. I keep saying next. Hey. All right, there we go. Scooby Apocalypse issue number one. And this is on my list because it's an amazing story. God, this thing is so, so good. This is probably one of the best comic book series to come out of the last decade. I, it, it really, it is that good story-wise. And I challenge anyone to go grab a single issue of this book and not fall in love immediately and want to read the entire thing. Seriously, this is not the Scooby-Doo you grew up with. The monster apocalypse is real and the Scooby gang is hunting them and trying to save everyone. So seriously, it's, it's really, it's Walking Dead with the Scooby gang. So that's cool. Next book on my list, Venom Lethal Protector number one. Now this, I, this needs no introduction and it needs no reason because everybody has one of these in their collection because you just need to. You have this beautiful cover. You have the, oh, just the amazing artwork. You have the foil. This was Venom at his height of, uh, you know, well, from evil venturing into anti-heroes. This was really, really cool. X-Men number 11. The only reason this is on the list is because I love this book. I don't know why. I don't. I just absolutely, I adore it. If I ever see anything that has the this image of this cover on it, I have to buy it. This one, the Pressman edition. I have I own t-shirts and a poster. And anything that has this image, I must own it. I mean, it's amazing Jim Lee artwork. You have your entire group of, of uh, the X-Men here. Well, not the whole group, but everybody that mattered back then. <laughs> ah. All right. Let's see. Uncanny X-Men number 165. Now, this book is on my list specifically for the artist. Now, the artist that drew this book, his name was Paul Michael Smith. Wow, I, I fell in love with his artwork. Uh, 
I know this guy was absolutely amazing. It's just simplistic. It's elegant. It's absolutely beautiful. And he was really, he was on the rise. He was slated to be probably the next big superstar artist uh, at this time. And then I think, you know, personal problems got in the way and everything just kind of went to hell for him. So, but I still love his work. He does pop up every now and again. He's drawn some X-Men books over the years. He had his own creator own series over an image called Leave it to Chance. But, you know, there's that. All right, the next thing. Oh, Frank Miller, goodness. Now this is called Sin City Silent Night. And this is one of those silent issues I was telling you about. And it's just unbelievable, masterful storytelling just with Frank Miller's artwork. I mean, when he was doing Sin City back in the day, he really was at the top of his game. I mean, wow, it was just amazing, amazing stuff. And I don't believe there's any words in this book until the very last panel, so... It's gorgeous, and it's really cheap to get. Everyone should have one of these in their collection. It's just so, so good. And yes, this video probably is going to get a lo little long, I just realized. I mean, I've only gone through 10 books, and it's been, what, 10, 12 minutes already? So, all right, what do we have next? Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, issue number one. Now, I just wanted this book because it was Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, issue number one. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up playing Dungeons and Dragons. You know, I started at junior high school like a bunch of, you know, us geeks out there sitting in the lunchroom playing Dungeons and Dragons or in study hall or whatever. So this actually, it means a lot to me. I was around when Advanced Dungeons and Dragons was introduced. So <laughs> here's probably a stack of books everybody's been waiting for. Now, there is more than one issue here, but they are kind of a whole. So I just wanted to show that Darker Image number one. Everybody who watches my channel knows my fascination with Darker Image. I don't understand it, though. I don't know why. But this is the quintessential Darker Image collection that I'm about to show you. Now, you guys ready for this? So we have three issues. And this is one of each of the trading cards. We have a Max trading card, a Deathbow trading card, and a Blood Wolf trading card. All right. Not one, but two issues of the new Stan variant. Oh, look at that. And you know, I catch a lot of crap for banging my books around, but seriously, guys, my books are tanks with the backboards and bags that I use. Nothing is going to hurt this short of me throwing this like a Frisbee across the room. So anyway, there you go. All right, next up, this is another standard edition, but I've had it signed by Jim Lee and Sam Keith. I would like to get Rob Liefeld on there, but I'm not sure if I'm willing to pay 40 bucks just to get him to sign this book. Um, I actually thought about it during the Amazing Con this last year, but I don't know. All right, what else do I got? Oh, the gold edition. Wow. And again, this was a gift from Daz the Key Chaser. He totally hooked me up with this book. It was selling for insane prices here in the U.S., and... I saw one out of the UK and he's like, wait a second, I think that's my store down the road from my house. And sure as hell, he called the guy, he's like, yep, there it is. And the guy actually pulled it off the wall and sold it to him and he shipped it out to me. It was cheaper doing it that way than buying it direct. And then we also have the Darker Image Platinum or Silver Edition. The whole book is black and white all the way through. Signed there by Sam Keith again. And I believe I have, yes, I have two copies of that. And last but not least, the Ashcan edition of the book. This is every version of Darker Image ever made right here. So, yeah, I love that. You know, and Darker Image is a great book to own. You have three first appearances. We have, you know, Deathblow, Blood Wolf, and The Max. Now, technically, this kind of is the Max's first appearance, but everybody lists Comico Primer number five as his appearance because there's a character similar to the Max in that book, and he's called Max the Hare, but he's a one eyeballed weird creature thing, so I don't know. He evolved eventually into the Max, but there we are. Actually, my stack is getting a little large here. Let me move these out of the way so they don't tumble. Coming back. All right, the next book I have on my list, X-Men number one. And this is the second series from 1990-something, 1991. Again, this is when I started collecting back in the 90s, right around the mid 
90s or so. So this book had just come out. It was cheap to get. Everybody wanted a copy. Best-selling comic book of all time right here. I mean, you just can't beat this. And I love this book because I've had it signed by Chris Claremont, Jim Lee, and Scott Williams. The three big names on the book right there. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that with this book. And this is one that is in my personal collection and will never, ever leave. Ooh, I just kicked my camera. No! Faust issue number one. Again, in the 90s, I was serious. Marvel and Underground, those were my big things in the 90s. And you could not get more Underground than Faust. This was adults only, ultra-violent, ultra-sexual. I mean, this thing is just, who boy. I mean, seriously, it's right there. It says adult reading. And no, no comic book store owner would sell this to you without an ID that says you were 18. It is insane, but oh man, the story is absolutely amazing. It's so good. And Tim Vigil's an incredible artist. The guy puts so much detail in his work, it's crazy. All right. Fantoma, issue number one. Now, again, this book was a gift from my good buddy, uh, Lyric Magic Moments. Fell in love with this cover as soon as I saw it. I mean, wow, the guy knows my taste when he sent this to me. It's just absolutely beautiful. I, I don't think it's, it's worth much, but I want to send this to CGC just to get it slabbed because that beautiful cover is completely slab worthy. <laughs> Silverhawks, issue number one. Now, I loved Silverhawks back in the day, so yeah, this is just, this is my childhood. That's why it's on this list. Now, Transformers 1 is also supposed to be on this list, but my personal copy has been sent off to CGC, so it's not here for the making of this video, but it's here in spirits with the other 80s cartoons. Doom Patrol, number eight, and this is the James O'Barr cover. Now, I really do not have to give a reason for that. I mean, look, it's James O'Barr. Uh, this gentleman, does he's the creator of The Crow. He doesn't do a lot of mainstream work. So when I saw this, I was really excited to see something you know out there in the world of James O'Barr's. Oh, that's just amazing. It's so neat. I love it. Anyway, that's why it's on my list. Cry for Dawn, issue number one. Now, this is an absolutely amazing, amazing underground indie comic uh, anthology series. You know, Dawn has now come into her own. She's more of a, you know, standalone character, gets her own series every now and again. But back when Cry for Dawn, Dawn started, she was more of a uh, hostess type of Vanna White character who would introduce the different stories throughout the book. Uh, the series ran nine issues before the company fell apart and, you know, Joe Monks and Joe Lintzner sp uh, split ways. But ah, still, this is an absolutely amazing book. Any indie, indie collector out there should have a copy of this. It really is an indie grail. Uncanny X-Men 314. And now I'm pretty sure this was actually on the list last year. And this that will never change. This is going to be, you know, if I do a top 50 every year or so just to update, this book isn't going anywhere. Now, this book here, Uncanny X-Men, Early Frost, this is the issue where Emma Frost was coming out of her coma after the attack on the Hellions, all the Hellions died. And she takes over, or her consciousness comes out and takes over Bobby Drake's body. And she uses his abilities in ways he never even imagined. I mean, she took his abilities to the next level to the point where in later issues, he goes to her for advice on what to do with his powers. And she's searching, trying to find the Hellions, get back to him, and then she realizes they've all been killed. Uh, this was an unbelievable story. Now, I met Scott Lobdell a few years back, and uh, he was telling me how this story came about. And that was, at this time, he wanted to upgrade Iceman and explore more of his powers and change his look and make him different and more powerful and really, really kick his character into overdrive. And Marvel told him no, he couldn't do it because a new toy line had just come out and it would have confused people to change his look from the toy to what was in the comic book. 
So he created this kind of what if story and uh, it works, man, because Bobby Drake's one of my favorite characters. So this was absolutely amazing to see. Cheval Noir, issue number 15 from Dark Horse Comics. I bought this for one reason and one reason alone, and that is the Yashitaka Amano artwork. Oh, God, look at that cover. Just look at that. Man, that's just absolutely beautiful. That guy's an amazing artist. Now, if you don't know the name, uh, he has done such great things as Vampire Hunter D, and he does all the character designs for Final Fantasy. Yeah, he is an absolutely amazing artist. He did a great Wolverine Electra series, too, or a one-shot, I believe. And it, that was probably early 2000s, so if you hunt that down, it's really cool. Magneto, issue number zero, The Twisting of a Soul, representing two tragic tales of the deadliest mutant of all time. Now, not only does this have an absolutely amazing cover, with some Bill Sienkiewicz artwork, has great stories, and this also has really, really fond memories for me, too. I remember when I was a kid and this book came out, and begging my dad for the 10 bucks to go buy this book at the time that it had cost. Now, I think you can get this for considerably less than that now, but it is still an absolutely amazing book. I'm just bummed I never got uh, Bill to sign this while he was in town. I wish I would have. Now, the Max number one should be on this list, but I had to bust out the Glow in the Dark cover instead. <laughs> so this is Max number one, Glow in the Dark cover, because, wow, you know, it glows in the dark. I mean, seriously, you can't go wrong with that. So cool. And the Max is an absolutely amazing series, too. Really ahead of its time. Sam Keith did a wonderful job on this story. If you don't have it, if you've never read the Max, just pick it up. It gets really, really deep. Speaking of James O'Barr, Pachow, The Crow, issue number one. Now, The Crow is, I mean, everybody knows who The Crow is. And really, it's an amazing story. If you haven't read it, it's so much better than the movie. And uh, James O'Barr poured his heart and his soul into this book when he created it. I mean, he had gone through a huge tragedy, tragedy at the time, and he just poured all of that into The Crow. Beautiful story. All new X-Men, issue number 40. This book right here, it's probably one of the most amazing stories I've ever read. And... Uh, uh, Bendis wrote a couple of the most beautiful comic book pages I've ever had the privilege of reading in this book. So this one, it's always going to be on my list. Death, the high cost of living. I mean, look at that. This is the Platinum Collector's Edition. I got Chris Boccolo to sign it, and he put all these pretty purple stars. I actually busted out this purple pen for him to use, and he was like, ooh, I actually let him keep it after that. He was so enthralled with the pen. <laughs> oh, yes. I love uh, Death as a character. is absolutely amazing. I love all of her stories. She's so, so cool. X-Men, issue number 25, Fatal Attractions, The Death of, the, of a Dream. This, wow, I mean, reading this for the first time back in the day, this blew my mind when I had read it. I was like, how could they do this? I mean, first off, we have this gorgeous 90s cardstock cover with, oh, look, oh man, that shows up really well. Look at the Gambit hologram. Man, tell me it doesn't scream 90s. And then I also got Andy Cooper to sign it because he's an amazing artist. But this is the issue where Magneto lifts Wolverine into the air and rips every ounce of adamantium out of his body. I, like I said, this book was jarring when I read it at the time. I just couldn't believe that it, I had, what I had just read and how that had happened. So, all right. The Tick, issue number one. Now, this is the second printing of The Tick, issue number one. I do have a first print, but it's sitting in a box 
it's a CGC 9.0 that I have for a mailbag day, so I don't even know what box is in. So you guys will see that eventually. Um, but anyway, this is the tick. The cartoon series, the live action show. I mean, I grew up watching this and reading this, so I, it has to be on this list. Has to, has to, has to, has to, because, you know, it's the tick. Anyway, actually, let me get rid of these now. Spawn issue number one. Now, anybody who grew up reading comic books in the 90s is going to have this in their top 50. Because it's Spawn. I mean, come on. Zen the Intergalactic Ninja issue number zero. Now, I'm a huge fan of Jay Lee, so I had to have this back in the day. And I actually got him to sign it right there. I, like I said, I love Jay Lee artwork. Anything that he had done, I had to buy it. I still love this man's artwork. It is so cool. But back then, man, it was raw. It was gritty. It was dirty. It was like he just took his paintbrush and flicked ink everywhere. I mean, it was it was so original, and it still is. It's just amazing. I love it. It's beautiful work. X-Men number 30. This is the wedding issue. Again, collecting in the 90s. This book was front and center. There was an article in my local newspaper about the wedding of Scott Summers and Jean Grey. I mean, that's how huge this event this was. And yeah, it's just, it's beautiful too. It's a great story. Gorgeous cover. I mean, really, it's a beautiful, beautiful cover. <laughs> the Incredible Condom Man, issue number one. I believe this is the one and only... And it's ultra limited edition. Um, the back cover actually has a signature and it's serial numbered by the the artist slash writer slash creator. Um, every, he signed and numbered every single one. Only 2,000 copies made. I remember the first time I saw this book, I really, I bought it as a joke. I couldn't believe there was actually a condom man. What year was on this? 1993. So I was just coming out of high school by that time or, you know, within a year. And, uh. Uh, yeah, it's just, it was crazy. I think I actually even found it in a quarter bin at, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was Golden Eagle Comics in Reading, Pennsylvania, where I found it. And they're actually still there. Wildcats, issue number one, and this is the gold edition, signed by Jim Lee. You know, again, image was huge in the 90s, so I had to have this uh, along with, look at that. Beautiful foil, that crazy hollow foil issue number two. I mean, that's just insanity. It was so amazing. Both these books absolutely scream 90s, which right up my alley. Adore them. And it actually really wasn't too bad of a story either. Love and Rockets issue number one. And this is the first print. You can tell by the price tag, $2.95. As the printings went up, uh, the price got increased until it was like three or four bucks for an issue, or four ninety five, I believe, was the fifth printing. Anyway, Love and Rockets number one, the Hernandez brothers created something absolutely amazing with this series. Uh, you know, it's it's insane. Uh, by the time this was coming out, there was a lot of underground books out there. Cerebus was being was on the forefront, but it really wasn't as popular as it was as it could have been. And Love and Rockets came out, exploded. Everybody loved this book. The stories were incredible. It was very adult centered, and without this book, mainstream companies wouldn't have taken a chance on some adult centered books. Like without this book, I I honestly think uh, Vertigo may never have happened over on DC, because it gave you know DC took the chance. Uh, you know, I think they have the Hernandez Brothers and Love and Rockets to thank for that. Uncanny X-Men, issue number 266. Now, this is the first appearance of Gambit. Also, back in the day, this was the very first big book I had ever purchased. Uh, it cost me $35 when I bought it at the time. And I think it's like three or four times that amount now if you want to buy this book. But... Since then, we've had Chris Claremont sign it, Jim Lee, and Andy Kubert right there. Look at that. 
the three big names on this book. I haven't gotten Joe Rubenstein to sign it yet, but I will. Uh, but yeah, this is one book that will never leave my collection. It's just absolutely amazing. Gen 13, issue number one, the ongoing series. And this is the Jenette Jackson cover, which is the homage to the Rolling Stones cover that had Janet Jackson on it. I have wanted this book for forever. It was, uh, back in the day, it was the hardest of the 13 variants to find. Yes, this book has 13 variant covers. You know, Gen 13, 13 variants. Ah. Anyway, um, absolutely amazing book. It's a gorgeous cover, and you know, since then I have now picked up two. Woohoo! <laughs> All right. Walking Dead, issue number 178, the Bill Sienkiewicz Andrea cover. I find this cover hauntingly beautiful. It really, when I first saw this, um, the book disturbed me. But in a good way, <laughs> I really, I love this cover. And uh, I've since had it signed by Bill Sienkiewicz. It's going to stay in my collection forever. Profit issue number six. Now, I bought this specifically for the Stephen Platt artwork. This guy was, wow. I mean, he was a superstar in the 90s. Everything he did turned absolutely to gold. Uh, I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't beat it. I and mean, this was like the best of the best right here. He started off over on Moon Knight, completely turned that series around. It's like every single issue just blew up because of him. But also because of his amazing artwork, it also proved to be his downfall because he was super detailed. This guy could not make deadlines. Um, you know, and just look at the amount of detail on that thing. It's crazy. So cool. It was so good. Spawn issue number nine. First appearance of Angela. What more can I say? I mean, right there. I've always loved Angela. She's an absolutely amazing character. I really, really hope they do something with her over at Marvel and the MCU. I mean, they kind of throw her in little things here and there, but I really want to see her take more of a leadership role. Her badass self like she did here. Ultraverse Rune, issue number one. I love the Ultraverse. This was also quintessential 90s. Great stories. I've been rereading a lot of the Ultraverse books, and they really hold up today. The stories are still that good. Now, this one in particular is very special to me because it's signed by Barry Windsor Smith. Now, I know I will never get a chance to meet Barry Windsor Smith or get any books personally signed. The guy does not leave the UK, and I don't believe he ever does any conventions anymore. So that's kind of sad. This I gotta settle for this. And this is one of those dynamic forces exclusives they did back in the day where they, they would apparently they had them sign ten thousand books. <laughs> all right. Now I kind of count all of these as one giant hole because Ultra Force. I love Ultra Force again. We're going and I had George Perez sign a bunch of these for me. So this is the Ultra Limited Foil Edition. There is the Gold hologram edition. Got him to sign it right there. Oh, that's actually a little hard to see in that. I got him to sign the ash can and a couple of the zero issues for me. And I'm a huge, huge Ultraverse fan. Ultra Force. I love the story. Like I said, great characters. And yeah, I will never part with those. They're just way too cool. Ha ha. Issue number one of Lady Death, CGC 9.6. The first time I walked into a comic book store and I saw this book, I absolutely fell in love. I had to have it. Uh, you know, I couldn't believe it. It's the first time I'd ever seen a Chromium cover. I had never purchased any Valiant books before that had the Chromium covers on them. I, I was completely enthralled. I was a chaos fiend from the moment after that. This, again, is kind of, it's a series of books, but I still count them as one whole. And this is Love Town uh, by the Ewan Twins from First Comics. And we have the first zero issue, issue one, issue two, and issue three, all signed by the twins. 
I've recently met these guys at the Amazing Las Vegas Comic Con, and wow, they are so awesome, so friendly. Uh, these guys went above and beyond for me. I mean, we really hit it off, and you know, I'm glad I can call these guys friends right now. And then I have Letter 44, issue number one, Charles Soule, one of my favorite writers, and he wrote this absolutely incredible story. And this is the Phantom variant, signed by Charles Soule. Little certificate of authenticity. If you haven't read Letter 44, I suggest you pick it up. It is amazing. Dead World, issue number one. And now I know I've told this story before, but I remember back in the 80s, and I had an issue of Dead World in my hand and an issue of Transformers number one in my hand, and I was debating on which book to buy. <laughs> oh, that's how long I've been into underground and indie comics. So, and to go along with that, I have this, this is my probably one of my favorite covers of Dead World. This is issue number 14, cover by James O'Barr. He did a bunch, you know, they started splitting the covers in half, where they did one half, you know, half of the print run was tame covers. The other half was gory, gross. And James O'Barr did a whole run of these tame covers. And again, I'm using one of those cool see-through backboards because it's a wraparound cover. Oh, it's so cool. Gotta love that. This is the King Zombie right here. He actually controls all the rest of them. He's smart. Strangers in Paradise number one. Terry Moore created a gem when he wrote this book. Uh, he created believable, likable characters. He drew realistic women. I mean, and this story has just completely evolved over the years and still being printed today, which is kind of cool. Uh, I mean, it's not just kind of cool, it's awesome, you know, how these characters all intertwine with each other. And he's running his, I think it's called Five Years uh, series right now, which takes all of his characters from all his different comic books, combines them together into one book. Uh, man, and that's just, that's amazing. And the last book on our list, the very last book, Evil Ernie issue number one yes and i gotta say this is probably this probably is the number one book on my list this book means so much to me um again this was probably the you know when i was a kid i spent a hundred dollars on this book oh boy i mean it's the, the book had went down in value after that but now it's really i mean it's surpassed that which is crazy this book is slowly going up every single year beautiful stephen hughes artwork uh, the character design and uh, the background story and everything by Brian Polito is absolutely amazing. It's just, you know, at the time, this is what underground comics were to me right here. This was just amazing. So, all right, people, that's it. I'm sorry this video ran, what, 40 minutes? <laughs> but those are my 50, or my top 50 comic books in my personal collection. Uh, like I said, I mean, my tastes change over the years, so this list might, I might update it again next year as new books come, some books go. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, it was fun, though, and I had a lot of fun last year making it, and a lot of fun this year doing it again, so who knows? Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, hit the little CV button right there and that bell up top to get all my notifications. And if you're a current subscriber, you guys are awesome. Love you to death. And also... Check out my mystery boxes. Five amazing books, 40 bucks shipped anywhere in the US. And man, check my Instagram. You can see all these awesome books that you're getting and uh, or you have a chance of getting. And really, I'm getting so many repeat buyers who are keeping the secrets to themselves. <laughs> like always, guys, thank you for watching and uh, take it easy.